out of pride. I'm saying what I have observed. Now, for examples, like I said, you can go to my website, you can get hundreds of quotes on free will and sin and all these, all these things from the early saints. These are the guys that were hand-trained by the apostles, by John or Paul, are their direct disciples in the second century. That's who I quote. The anti nisan fathers, as, as they're called uh, technically in the, in the manuals. The ones before the year 400. Because after that, things started to get a little corrupt. Although there were people... Because Augustine went after him very brutally. He went after his opponents and wiped them out. Even though he had to hold uh, uh, trials against them with the deck stacked in his favor so he could pronounce them excommunicated and then heretics so they'd be expelled from the Roman Empire. So this, this is how he eliminated his opposition and got the Bible into Latin instead of Greek, the common language of the people, and taught all this stuff, and it became ingrained into teaching to this day. They still teach heretic Augustine's teachings in the seminaries and the Bible colleges to this day, as though he was some great theologian. He was the biggest heretic that ever lived. One of the early, early ones, Justin Martyr. Now, Justin Martyr was a disciple of Polycarp, Polycarp lived way into his 90s, 80s or 90s before he was martyred, was a disciple of John. Now he was hand taught by Saint John the Divine. So Justin Martyr learned from him. What did he learn? We have learned from the prophets that we hold to be true, that punishments and chastisements and good rewards are rendered according to the merit of each one's actions. Hmm. Boy, that, that's heresy today. Since if it not be so, but all things happen by fate, everything's immutable, you know, unchangeable, then neither is anything at all in our own power. It's not. See, what these people are teaching is exactly what he's saying here. For if it is fated that man is good or evil, neither is his good actions notorious or his bad actions to be blamed. And again, unless the human race has the power of avoiding evil and choosing good by free choice and will, they are not accountable for their actions of any kind whatsoever. Like I said, there are hundreds of these kind of quotes. From Clement. Clement of Rome was disciple was he's mentioned in Philippians, Paul's disciple. He wrote first and second Clement, and other epistles, just like Paul. Might as well be the writings of Paul which he was taught. Now, if Paul taught this corruption of nature, it would certainly be in Justin's teachings, and it would be in Clement's teachings. But you think it's in the Bible. You think Romans 5 teaches that. You think Romans 7 teaches, well, I can't do it. I'm trying to do it, but I can't. No, you won't. That's all. That's all Paul's saying here. I will to do, but that sin that's taken me captive, yes, it takes you captive. When you give yourself over to that sin... Your mind is taken captive because it feels good to do it, right? Just like Augustine with his addiction to lust. He didn't want to give that up. He didn't want to crucify his flesh with his passions and desires. So he invented this nonsense that it's impossible for a man to crucify his flesh. Well, God's got to do it for him. Well, if God's got to do it for him, he's got to stop you from sinning. Why doesn't he stop everybody from sinning? Why doesn't he stop all this sin and degradation and misery in the world right now? So we can lift up the children and, and the hurting and the widows and the orphans and all the rest of it and, and establish justice and righteousness. No, he can't because man has free will. Just like Cain. If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do not well, sin lies at the door and his desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Rule over it. Well, if man can't rule over it, then we're going to have to apologize to Cain for sure. God's going to have to. And we'll have to throw out all concepts of repentance and faith proven by deeds. That's why it matters. I don't know what else I can say to persuade you. That's a brief history of where it came from. If you want to dig into it further, you can find. I know they think it comes from the Bible. They think they're taught of the Spirit. And you can't tell them anything because we're all going to hell and we're all whatever. But this is where it came from. Those of you that are awake, those of you that are digging, 
Those of you that claim that, yes, I believe man's not born with a with corrupted nature. He has a free will. He has to make a choice. Then understand where this stuff came from. It came out of the pits of hell. From the biggest heresy of all time. Handed down to the church for thousands of years. And now corrupted everywhere that we look. I can't find hardly anyone that understands the nature of man and the nature of sin, how it relates to repentance and faith proven by deeds. I can almost count them on one hand. And that's sad. I've been at this for tw over 20 years. There's some, I praise God for all of them, that see it and are fighting it and are contending. But those of you that keep saying it doesn't matter, I worry for your souls because you so easily could be deceived by the spirit of error and go off into the error of the wicked. Because like I said, you get complacent about this. You get worldly. You let that stuff start creeping into your life. What happens to the lukewarm? They get spewed out of the mouth of God, right? That's the danger here of not sorting these things out in the proper manner. We're not playing a game, folks. We're not in an in-house debate. We're not trying to prove we're right and everybody else is wrong. We're trying to point you to the way to eternal life is to strive to enter through the narrow gate. And if man can't strive, then God's got to do it for him. Then who can be saved? Only the elect, right? Back to this mess. You see what I'm saying? You can't contradict what you're teaching with this corrupted nature of man nonsense. It can't be both ways. It can't be. Just like we can't be, it can't be penal substitution in ransom or moral government in ransom. It's got to be one way or the other. Because if you offer man an alternative to his obedience, like waiting for God to change him, then he's never going to obey. He may pretend that he does. He may live a little bit better, maybe associate with some better people sometimes. But it's always going to be that sin confess, sin confess, 1 John 1, 8 and 9 nonsense I mentioned before where he thinks he's a Christian and he keeps falling back into his porn, into his drunkenness, into his lust, thinking that's the Christian life. No, you've got to break free. You've got to break your mind free from the bondage. Like he called it bondage of the will, his book. You've got to break from the bondage of these ancient heresies and understand where they came from. They didn't come from the Spirit of God. They came from the Spirit of error. So you can disseminate the truth. So you can walk uprightly and not enter the air of the wicked and lead others in the same path of righteousness.